Living in harmony is possible if you know your emotions and how to handle them. Dr. Carmen Roman will share with you in an engaging way the current psychology by sharing herself or interviewing experts who will inspire you. Learn how to live a life of fullness and how to recover your emotional harmony with Dr. Roman. Welcome to Emotions in Harmony. Hello, amigos in Harmony. Welcome to this episode of Emotions in Harmony. You are listening now in this new phase of the podcast. I call it the third season. I don't want to, I don't want to lie to you. It's not a third year of the podcast. It's actually almost a year. But I call it the third season just because it has had three major changes. And this change now is about you will receive all the information in Spanish and in English as much as is possible and as much as I have bilingual guests. And you will receive in video and audio. We are bombarding you everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that. Thank you. Thank you. Especially thank you to the Spotify. When it comes to the podcast, Spotify has been really amazingly helpful. So thank you to the Spotify listeners for welcoming me with these ideas of the Dr. Roman and her guest. And we are doing this topic in emotional eating and I have the counselor Sochil Carrasquedo. Hi Sochil, how are you? Really good, thank you. We are here. I forget that I am in a in video, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that's true, that's true. I kind of forget because I am so adjusted to, when I talk in English, I am so adjusted to do it only in the microphone. Okay, okay. So, <laughs> so I will keep reminding me that we are in the past way. Well. Okay. Yeah. It's exciting. It's exciting that you are in this new phase of the podcast and the video cast. This is going to be Facebook Live too. We don't know, probably next Friday, next Thursday or something like that. If you are now in Facebook and you are listening to us, So sorry, it was a pre-recorded just because we want to take advantage of the technology and we want to give you a better quality of video and audio. We don't want to mess around with the quality that much. And also because remember, this is the only way I can adjust schedules, especially with somebody who is out of the country like Sochi today. I can adjust schedules and bring you at a better time for you. So we are doing the best with technology. It's not, right. not cheating. Yeah. <laughs> It's just working around. <laughs> Welcome, Sochil. Sochil is, and I have the information here, is a psychologist, is a therapist, counselor in the university, from the U university regional of, how do you say, Southwest? Southwest. Southwest Regional Southeast, Southeast. Southeast University Regional University in Oaxaca, Mexico. And she came and she also finished a master's degree in Wine State University in Michigan, where she earned her master's in counseling psychology with emphasis in family and couples therapy. So for us in Mexico, let me tell you a little bit more. In, in Mexico for us, clinical psychologists is something that we do deeply and we study a lot And it's early or on in the career, but it's as challenging as clinical psychologists here. But then when you translate here, you cannot be called yourself clinical psychologist. You need to call yourself therapist or counselor or something. Yeah. Yes. And that's very unfair. Right. Because all your knowledge and everything, you should be called Dr. Carrasquedo. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's unfair. It's really unfair, this process of translation into this system, but... But I guess the Board of Psychology in this country do the best they can too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So welcome, Sochil. I, I, I am very grateful for your knowledge and for everything you have done in the field. And thank you for being with us today. Thank you so much for inviting me. Yes. Tell me a little bit. Tell me a little bit about yourself so our listeners and video, video listeners can, can learn about you. Well, I, I'm Mexican. I came 10 years ago, 11 almost. And it took me like seven years to really, through the process, to get my license. I got my license uh, three years ago 
as a psychotherapist. We call it like, we can call, or you can call myself, I can call myself like psychotherapist. Well, it, it has been like a long journey, but I always say like, if that makes you happy, it will give, give me the patience to be, to wait and to really work on the process. Every step, right? Just from the rest, to to get my my license well so that has been like yeah tell me oh uh, well something that is well i always tell them because you know in the mid middle east no in the midwest sorry the midwest you usually is more like cognitive more like i think yeah, like it's a psychology you can find like humanistic psychology but it's more cognitive and i came from like a perspective that it really i like to see human as like a in a holistic way and then when so i need i sometimes i had to travel to get like a certification or even the when i found the master in counseling psychology but also with the emphasis in family and couples therapy so that brought me like more in the systems more in the just to see the person not like as an individual is more like part of a family part of a, a system right how they describe so that's how I really got in love about even constellation therapy because you don't see the person as just that person and their behaviors and the way that all the emotions is more you go beyond that you go back beyond that like transgenerational too yeah that's the beauty of I appreciate a lot my Mexican background because that's the beauty right yeah right. we have that right as a culture we need to just not see us as ourselves individually it's more like okay we need to have a family a community yeah and that that helps us to understand better our Mexican or Latino community in, in this country right yeah so Tell me, today the topic we are talking is about emotional eating, which is absolutely interesting. We just record for the ones who want to listen in Spanish. We just record the same episode in Spanish. And it has been absolutely amazing to listen to, to Xochitl Carrasquedo. Now tell me, explain to me in English what, what is it? What is emotional eating? When it's like, I, I will describe it like a symptom. I think it's a symptom, like when the body starts telling you that you need to do something to express yourself or express an emotion or uh, change something in your life that it used to work, but it doesn't work anymore now. And then the body starts, you know, sending you like this kind of signs that tells you, okay, you need to do this. And when we talk, when When I talk about the emotional eating is when we talk about food and we, it's supposed that food should be just direct relationship and I eat to feel better, not to feel better, sorry, to live. I eat to nourish myself, I eat to, to be healthy or to be alive. But when we talk about emotional eating is when I use the food as a way to deal with my life, as a way to deal with my emotions, as a way to deal with something in my life that is not in balance. We talk about that. It's something that is happening in ourselves, in our life, or in our environment that is making us to use the food as a resource, even as a something, something that helps us to live, uh -huh. to deal with mm -hmm. our life. Yes. So it is beyond, you say, beyond the decision, beyond discipline, beyond... Right. Beyond just the surface of eating or not eating. Yes. Yeah. I love that you say that the discipline, because I always say is not about willpower, right? We don't talk about that. It's not okay that oh, you are not you are not working out enough. You are not following the diet. You don't have discipline or you are not constant. It's, we try, we do our best to get on track, to do workouts. But when something is invalid, oh, like emotion is not in balance or like in your life is something that you need or, and you have not received it or that you are not expressing is you can do where any effort to eat healthy, to dieting or to try to change your body, but it will always come back to the point that you are so stressed. So you will, that will, you will fail because it's, I need my 
my way to deal with my emotions. Even when we diet, we get more stress, right? Your body gets more stress. You can, you know, it's like, oh, it's, you never have like a craving about, I don't know, strawberries. And then you are doing like the Atkins diet that you cannot eat any fruit. And then it's like, I want strawberries. You never thought about it, but just because you don't have it is more, you are more stressed and you're more prone to crave. So in fact, it's even worse. You put your system and your body in more stress when you are dieting. When it's something related more with emotion, it's, you you add more stress to your body. Yeah. So in fact, something is happening that is stressing your, your system or your body that triggers that you need to comfort yourself or you need to relax. So food is becomes like a comforting tool, right? Or like a relaxing, like the to go when I'm so stressed. So if you are, like you say, well, I want to change my body or I want to change my habits, but you get with a very restrictive diet, what it helps with your body is like, I'm more stressed than I was before. Even Indeed. that. Yeah. So then you fail again because you're like, no, I can deal with the stress. It's more than what I had. And then you start eating like again. And even sometimes after, you know, dieting like five days, like we can mm -hmm. say just juice. You want to eat the, or the whole freezer, right? Yeah. After that. Yeah. So I think, yes, that is when we confuse. And culturally, we, we have that idea that if you are not able to have the a healthy body, we can talk about that. A healthy body is because you are not very disciplined or you are not have the willpower to do the exercise. But it's, it also, I think that is more complex than that or more complicated than that. It is way more complicated than that. And yes, I think actually we needed somebody with more integral perspective to come and look at it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, because... Yeah, there is a lot of science in the United States and I am so glad about it. But just recently, I think they are start getting the wave of our eating has to do with who we are. Right. Yeah. With the Weight Watchers program, it's doing deep changes. Right. It is needed to see it even as um, with family constellations. Yeah. Right. Even, even I love as, it. as yes. a family, as a history with a, our ancestors, etc. How... We relate to food. So tell us about what you think about family and, and eating. Yes, it's how we learn what is the pattern. And it has, you know, that I don't believe as all, but I think that very healing is so when you have, a, or when you are overweight, you have an issue with the mother. Mm -hmm. We always have issues with the mother because it's, she gave us food since we were born. Yeah. Right. Even when she, when we were inside of her like it was if, you, if she was stressed if she was worried concerned or happy it depends that how we can get that emotions and then how when we relate to food sometimes it has to be with how family show us to relate with food or with the body so we are very aware of the body or is like being aware of Overweight has a meaning to our family, like something that you shouldn't be, or it has to be more than just the food or eat to nourish yourself. Yeah, I came to the United States and here we should be skinny. Yeah. <laughs> right. And right. then I go to Mexico and like, what is wrong with you? Right, <laughs> right. Yeah, so it's different culture. <laughs> yeah, where I, in Oaxaca, it's like, if you are skinny, it's like, no, my God, you, and you need to, you need to, Food. I need to start feeding you. Yeah. Right. And it's always a sense of like for me or for my family, for example, if mother is you nurse your child, mm -hmm. that means that you love your child. Oh, yeah. Right? So it has even that meaning of love. Mm -hmm. so, and that's when we say when we eat or the emotional eating or even being overweight, sometimes has to be with the with that need to be lost, need to have attention, need to have like that uh, hug that you you need and you have and you don't ask yeah. sometimes. Yeah, that's true. So for my mother, if you come and visit, you need to eat because otherwise she feels like she didn't did her job at yes. all. Right? Or was reject, you, they feel rejection like, you know, why you don't want my food, right? Yeah. Yes. Well, and when I came here and go and visit some families in the United States and they don't even offer you water, it's like so weird. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's like wow that was weird <laughs> yes yes that's true that's true how what are the symptoms and the consequences of emotional eating the symptoms i think is how you eat how you relate with food you can see that oh, is something that you are very concerned like or you are overeating or you are overweight or have a something physical that is a condition that has related with the overweight or we, we always think that emotional eating has to be with being overweight but also could be underweight you know, or stop eating it has it this is the symptoms of i don't eat or i have are very always people could be very concerned about food about eating or people that do a lot of exercise just to you know get out the calories that they that they consume so it it has to be to be eating all the time It's more like the relationship that you create that is like not a symptom as it is, but it's more the con the behavior that they show, right? So we can like eat a lot or what we say in, in periods of time that is like, well, you almost eat like what three people eat or the whole day. Yeah. We're confused because now the food is have a lot of calories. Mm-hmm. That even the overweight is, oh, I just eat like smoothie every day. And sometimes it's not so so healthy or your body cannot process it the same way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. It's, it's amazing how we don't think, really, we don't process what calories or what the food has or whatever. But but our body knows. Right. Our body, by the smell, by the passion of the food, I believe that touching of the food and the smelling has something to do with eating healthier. Mm -hmm. Like we 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 exchange more information. When, right, yeah. right. I think that about the food or even it's how you can relate to food. How you can become become addicted to food because food sometimes and the the combination. I always tell you carbs. Well, no, as sugar, flour, and fat together. In some way, it's like you, when you are like craving, you never crave like a lettuce, right? No. <laughs> oh, God, no. I know. Like, I, I don't have nothing to do. I will eat uh, you cucumber. No, you never yeah. thought about that. You go to comfort food. It, what comfort food has, like, well, has flour, has uh, fat, and uh, has sugar or salt. So, what provide us is we can symbolize this as the mother what the mother food or the milk that we took when we were babies has the same uh -huh. you know it has carbs has like sugar and has fat because that's the way that to nourish so we go back to that it's like that's why we can feel like the comforting thing like you know I feel okay that is everything is okay I used to tell my grandma, I am hungry. I want like, you know, a concha or a bread or something. <laughs> and my, my grandma would say, there is like vegetables there. Yeah. <laughs> or there is fruits. And, and I say, oh, no, 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 no. And she say, well, there you are not hungry. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Right. And it was always in my house. Like, you are not hungry. You are craving. That's not, that's different. Right. If you're hungry, go and pick a fruit. So they would not let me that. And it was nice. It was nice to learn that as a child. An amazing tool because you say, okay, what is the sign that I'm hungry, real hungry? You know, your body start like, well, you know, doing this. And then you, sometimes if you wait so much, you have headaches or even you feel, you, your body is telling you, okay, I'm hungry and I will eat whatever I, you put in my plate. But craving is like, no, it's more related to I need something. I don't know what I'm in a specific. Or sometimes it's really specific. Yes. I need a ice cream. I need a chocolate when I have, you know, uh -huh. that period. Yes. And you are sensitive. We need chocolate too. But it's a way to also the, the body is very wise because ask you what you physically need or emotionally need. Mm hmm For example, chocolate has a lot of the fat and the sugar, but has is an ingredient, tryptoph. I don't know in, in, in English, pretty sure, but it's something that helps you to relax or to have a good mood. Mm -hmm. you no. Know? Mm -hmm. So and when we are in this period, like on sensitivity, women is like you have like this 
changes in your mood. Uh -huh. So in a way, it's to regulate that mood. To regulate that mood. So yeah, our body knows, but sometimes what we were talking in the Spanish version is this disconnection. Disconnection. Yes. You were explaining us what does mean this disconnection with with our our body, our needs. We stop listening, and that's when you say, "What is the part? The consequences? It could be a lot of physical consequences, but I think that the most important and that I really want to people know is stop listening to your body and even your emotions. It's like when you use the food as a way to deal with your emotions or as a way to not express it. Or I cannot say that to my husband or I cannot deal with the kids or I cannot deal with the stress or in my job. And what you don't say what you need to say or what is good for you, you start like needing a way to take out the, that energy from your body. So your body will look to certain ways or different ways to, that you can provide that to yourself and regulate again. No, it's when we are tired. I say sometimes we are not hungry, we are tired. So your body say, oh, if you want to keep going, well, give me some calories, right? So that's when we start eating. And it's sugar because then you, you are okay. Again, active and you stop not resting. When in fact, what your body is needs is to rest so that's when we stop listening and they say we keep going what are the signs that i need to go and find professional help <laughs> i'm the ther i'm a psychotherapist that always says that you need to see psychotherapy like you go to the dentist <laughs> like you need to go at least once a year or at least no one well, probably not once a year but once in some years when you have a crisis it's when your body is asking you mm -hmm. I need something something needs to change something needs to change in your life it could be different areas of our life you have a need to in some way to change something or to, to just put attention to yourself right okay. I think that is the best sign to, to do it okay so when you have a need to put to put attention to put attention in yourself right to explore to we to question to we like we don't question our, our, our life so much like this is my idea idea life can I change it it's not that the high expectation but it's just okay what can I change that I'm not feeling okay right now mm -hmm. we're com constantly changing right we need to change it's very interesting this topic and there are a lot of resources out there yeah so um, I will put you later in the in the hot spot and I will ask you but is there anything else that we are missing in this topic that you want to take we talk about the same as to listen to your body as to be more aware of your body also we say throw away perfectionism right yeah that's to right like to control all, yes. all the time to try to do everything we learn in some point of our life we learn that we need to do many things mm -hmm. to feel love or to make people get attention to us so many things that we keep going and then when we find that is the way that we can survive in some way we say that's it Right, and we always in our mind trying to control everything. We barely go to what we feel and the emotions and the spirit. Do I need what I need to, to feel alive, to really enjoy my life, to really feel in balance? Right. We we always now it's like very common to talk about balance of emotions to to be mindful about our life. I think that is a very important way to go back to how you feel if you can really have we were talking about that in Spanish like scan yourself right your body your mind how I wake up I wake up you know good mood bad mood angry sad and then when you you really realize what is going on in in your life then you can do something to change it and that is something the awareness creates a more proactive way to live also take every responsibility right it's us always Yeah, so what we are talking here is about a more profound and deep way of working with relationship with food. Yes. Or than, than just normal diet or, or normal approach to anorexia or something. It's just something more meaningful what you are suggesting here. 
but it's not about the food, right? It's not about the food. It's kind of a, our relationship with love. You were saying in, in the Spanish version, yeah. Mm-hmm. How we love ourselves. The unconditional love that we can now, in some point, probably we don't didn't get it because other reasons. But now we can give it to ourselves, right? And it has to be like kind of a be vulnerable to ask for that because we are afraid that probably they will reject us again or they will don't put attention. But just to have that courage to do it, it will change the way we we can perceive ourselves and that how we can provide love to ourselves. Yeah, that's right. Wow. It is very interesting. So, of course, we could keep going and on and on and on, yeah? <laughs> yes. And also, uh, if you in the future want to come and talk about couples therapy that you work with, so yes, I would love that too. Let's put you for now in the hard spot. Okay. Hard spot for the ones who are new to the podcast and the video cast now is putting Sochil Carrasquedo in the place that she can just, I will send her the questions and she needs to answer whatever she thinks quickly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is, uh, this is my way, my playful way of picking in the brain of our guests because we want to explore and we want to, to take everything we can from their knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, uh, so Chil, what is a daily habit that contributes to the emotional eating? Uh, we, we were talking about that. I think any kind of go to yourself, right? To be introspective, to ask how you feel about your thoughts. I think... We talk about yoga, meditation, just to be in contact with yourself. I will say, I always say, we're running or any exercise that gives you like the time for yourself to think about what's going on in your life, right? Okay. So does it, that contribute to heal or to balance our eating? Yeah. To create like the consciousness or the awareness about, right? Okay. Or how I'm eating, then you can then see, okay, something is not right or something is not in balance. And then you can take the responsibility to say, okay, well, I need to do something about it. What is a resource, online resource, that you find very important for this topic? So when we are talking about in English, I think it's, am I, I just a web page that it calls Am I Hungry? I think that is what the first that I uh, knew about that, that they work more than just the eating, it's more about uh, emotional eating, right? I think also now health coach, I don't know if you, you have, if you find a good health coach, it, talk, it doesn't talk to you about just how to eat or what to eat. It asks you about your life. It asks you what you, what other needs you need to, uh, in some way, give it to yourself, right? To be more, a complete or more mindful or more in balance, I think. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you get into coaching needs to be some more integral coaching. Right. Right. What is your favorite book? I mentioned it, Lisa Borbeau. She's brought, uh, listen to your body in English. It's called it, even if it's written in English, I think that is a translation. Translation. She was the author, but it's also it's translated to Spanish, not the Spanish to English. Oh, okay. So the book is in English, Listen to Your Body. Right, right. Uh, and we will put it in the notes. Or we will put it in the comments in the Facebook. What advice you will give somebody who is start thinking about addressing this problem with emotional eating? It, I think that is like the title of the, of the book, right? Listen to Your Body. Listen to your needs. Anna Mendy, that she is a Mexican that, that has approached in emotional eating, says like, "What are ask you? What are you hungry about? You know, hunger could be about life. Hunger could be about have more balance in your life to get like a new job or new or express yourself. These kind of uh, hungers are so interrelated with what really we are hungry about. Mm-hmm. Wow." Okay, tell us about you, about your practice, about where they can find you. Well, I have a practice in Novi, Michigan. That's when I have my where I have my office. Also, I work for Solar Sun Associates. Uh, that's a clinic, and it's more 
more for a couples. Like, so they refer me couples to work with. And then I have a web page that is English and Spanish. Well, it's not a web page. Well, yes, it's the web page is New Path Integrated Therapy. That's the way you can find the workshops. I'm planning to introduce more English for English speakers, like the emotional eating and also constellation therapy and a couple therapy uh, workshop. But also you can find me in Facebook in the Healing Path. That is where I, I post more about resources that the community can take advantage of different topics as well. Okay, well, it, we put all of the resources in the notes. So it's your Facebook page, mm -hmm. your website, and all about your practice and everything. I, I kind of visit the website before our interview and it's very beautiful. Oh, thank you. So I invite the video and the listeners to, to go and visit and just say hello there. And also for the ones who are already in the Facebook group Emotions in Harmony, you are there now, you are part of the group and you, they can ask you questions there, they will find you. Well, Thank you very much. Thank you for being in the um, in the audio and the video in everywhere here. And thank you for your time, especially now that you are traveling. Right. Thank you so much for inviting me. Really enjoy it. Yes. Well, bye for now. We have ended one more episode of Emotions in Harmony. See you the next one when Dr. Carmen Roman will help us to have a more fulfilled life caring for ourselves and the ones we care for. Meanwhile, visit www.emotionsinharmony.com to see the show notes, subscribe, and enjoy more content. <laughs>